On today's episode of Watch JRGO, you guys finally figure out what the giant round tube thing is that's always been in the shop. What is going on guys? I'm Watch JRGO and today we're here to fire up this steam generator. And that is exactly what it is. This is a gigantic burner and you pump a bunch of water into it and it makes steam. So obviously here's the burner. We'll go through the whole thing and just take you take you through a complete tour, but it looks like it's got a steam whistle on it now. <laughs> Mods. You got three of them. Skirt, skirt. All right, before we take you through the tour of the actual steam generator, what do we got here? It looks like this, this water coming into it. This is propane that's running the, this here is propane. We have propane accessories. <laughs> Our propane accessory is that truck right there, which is that <laughs> massive propane truck that's also supplying this. Well, this, this is the beginning of the steam generator. Yes, this is the uh, main input water line that we run 60 gallons a minute through this thing at, uh, at high flow. And so when you take it to the oil field, you hook this hose up and turn this line on and start feeding it with water. Water's now going through the whole system and coming out the back. Oh, is that blue and air? Yeah, this is this is air. If you need to get the, if you need air, we'll have to. Oh, external the, air or something. Well, actually, this is to connect to another trailer. So we just hook this up and. Oh, okay. And uh, give it the other trailer. So right now, water's flowing through through Indeed. the strainer, through the pump, through the valves in the pump, and then through this green line. This is a five piston pump. Five piston, yeah. It's is a five piston pump. It'll deliver three thousand psi. We, uh, we run this thing up to a maximum of 2,500. And uh, uh, so the, the water flows through this green line right here. It's cold water through a flow measurement system. This is our flow meters gotcha. right here. All these instruments are all for uh, flow measurement. This, all this is for diesel fuel when we run off diesel fuel. Gotcha. So we have an onboard diesel fuel system flow measurement. It'll tell you exactly how many gallons per uh, minute, gallons per second, whatever. You Is want it measure. optical? No, it actually uses strain gauges to see how the uh, the tube. It this, forms. There's, there's actually a very small tube inside this tube, and it looks for deformation. And, it's, or and something. it's protected by this tube. So this is just a protecting. Sure. Here's where the electric sensors are wired to this tube. Yeah. And as the as the fluid accelerates around these corners. The more acceleration, the more the tube deforms, and the measurement is uh, fed into this computer, which calculates the flow rate. Huh. So uh, that's a cool way to find flow. This is the valve for the diesel, I guess. That's the uh, uh, that's the throttle for the diesel. Okay. So uh, these are the these are the fuel shutoff valves. Water uh, flows through this green pipe, goes through this heat exchanger, out of this heat exchanger, and it goes into basically a big coil. It kind of looks like a coil on your air conditioner that it, that. Uh, uh, basically, it, it uh, condenses the exhaust gases, which are combusting inside this big drum at about uh, uh, 1,800 to 2,200 degrees, based on certain conditions. Uh, anyways, that water, I uh, mean, that, that combusted gases uh, uh, flow over this coil, and it changes it from 1,800 degrees. It comes out up there to 300 degrees, and absorbs a lot of heat in this coil. Here's my outbound water at the moment, and of course, you know, that's just regular old drinking water right now. Yep. And uh, so it's just a big steel pipe. Come over here and we start uh, down there at the uh, propane truck. Yeah. That propane truck delivers uh, propane into this heat exchanger, which basically that heat exchanger we just looked at on the other side of the machine. Same thing again. This is the exact same heat exchanger. Only we're, hi Gabe. Hey, Ross, how are you? Um, better than I deserve, Pat. This is uh, the exact same heat exchanger and it's used uh, to, in this case, vaporize the propane. So in this, what we're doing right now is we're taking liquid propane off that truck, bringing liquid propane in through this center pipe right here. Yep. Comes in right here, goes down through, comes back, and right here we hope to get nothing but vapor out. If by chance we happen to get liquid, liquid, this is just this is a propane tank that we just turned it into a knockout. Drug. So the liquid just sits at the bottom. Or liquid will sit at the yeah. bottom, and then we'll flash that off and consume it in the machine. Gotcha. And then the vapor comes out right here. This is the old fill line. Yep. Gabe is uh, uh, sh <laughs> showing off the... Uh, okay, Vanna. <laughs> uh, he's, he's doing the Vanna White. Anyways, uh, so this is this used to be the fill. Now it's our uh, gas out. And you can obviously see there's a little bit of liquid in there. Huh. Okay, yeah. but as soon as I start her up, we'll blow that liquid right down. We ran it uh, yesterday and burned 180 gallons through it. Just like that. I It'll imagine this functions as a heat sink as well. It does, because if this gets too hot, 
this uh, tank basically acts as a radiator because I don't want to get this hose too hot. Right. Um, uh, so anyways, then gas comes out right there. That uh, propane gas comes up, enters this yellow pipe. And this is all of our, this is regulation. This takes it down from the pressure in the propane truck, which is like 160 PSI, takes it down to 30 PSI. Sure. Here we got, th this is my fuel measurement system uh -huh. that we use to measure the flow rate of the propane into the burner. These are the fuel shutoff valves, which are what we call them a guillotine valve. They're, they're, they're held open by, they're, they're opened by a big motor and they're held by a little bitty spring. And as soon as you trip, a big spring slams them shut. And then this one here opens in the middle and dumps any remaining propane to a vent. Gotcha. So anyways, uh, now these are steam train whistles. Yeah. Of course, this is not a steam train. <laughs> but uh, anyways, when we when it gets accepted by the customer, they get to play the play a tune. Ah. So uh, we just these are all antique steam whistles from the from probably the 40s and 50s. I've I've collected at uh, antique stores, and uh, we decided to put them on here to have a little fun. Got an e-stop right there. Got an e-stop to shut the whole machine down. Uh, also, the whole trailer was built in house too. It does look like you know a store bought trailer or something. You would just call somebody and have them fab up. Every part of it was built in house. How long did it take? About a year to turn this one. Yeah, but we kind of slow walked it, so right. we did the engineering and uh, right. we we were perfecting it as we go as we did the engineering. This is the fuel control valve. It's a high precision uh, fuel control that uh, basically adjusts the uh, uh, the fuel flow into the bottom of the burner right there. So this is air. Where the magic happens. Uh, this is the air supply right here, air intake. Is this a, a 25? It's a uh, 20 horse. 20 horse? A 20 horse blower, so we can blow, we blow the air through the center of this uh, burner, mix the uh, fuel. And this is the pilot that sets it on fire. It's got a, it's got 150,000 BTU pilots, about the size of what heats your house. <laughs> and this thing puts out a fire that's four to four and a half uh, feet in diameter and about 22 foot long. And this is just igniter control? That's. Yeah, that's just the transformer for the spark plug. Because we've got that spark plug right there. That's right. Is that an auto light? I uh, know it's an Auburn. Oh, okay. I thought it's. A, I saw AU. Thought it had no, an auto light an in it. Yeah. Uh, so the pump itself is a uh, very big water pump. Very big water pump. That's a hundred, right? That's a hundred horse motor. <laughs> it's a very heavy duty hundred horse motor. So yeah. It's made to last for years. We designed the whole thing. Designed the the guys in the shop build all this thing and. Everybody here at ACES has done a fantastic job of uh, designing and constructing. The whole thing's made for, believe it or not, extremely rapid disassembly. The belts tighten in just minutes, but if you want to take it apart, it'll come apart in a flash. The best thing about our system is uh, it's a one-button start. So first thing we do is we go to control mode. We set it to propane. I want to run on propane to begin with, and all the buttons we've... The guys here at ACES have designed all this uh, software, so it's super simple to run. Then uh, what we're doing here is we're downloading different tunes and selecting sure. different components to operate it. So it's taken us years to uh, get to this point, but it's uh, today it's really... Uh, so you can run off petroleum-based or natural gas or propane or anything like that, basically? Three fuels. Basically, we're qualified to run on four fuels. Oh, four I mean, fuels. We could run on others, but we're, we're, we've designed in four fuels. We can do, the basics are crude oil. Mm -hmm. We can run on crude. We can run on uh, diesel fuel or number two. Uh, they're about the same thing. There's a slight difference between them, but basically they're the identical fuels. Uh, natural gas or propane, and, uh, and to select between them, it's just it's just actually flipping different buttons. So now we just come right here and just hit the start button. Testing. That's right here. And start feed water. Pump starts up. Feed water sucks in low. Low. So where's the coffee maker on this one? I mean, is it do drip or? I, you just take your mug sideways and hold it out the end and you'll be good to go. Okay. okay. It yeah. should take about one eighth of a second, I think. I've, I've made tea on the back end. <laughs> I, mean, I just take a coffee cup, fill it full of, uh, take a bottle of water and squirt it in a coffee cup and just set it on the tea oh. towel. And then you gotta be very careful when you pick the cup up. Okay. Yeah. You have to wear a glove because the cup is very hot, but it'll be boiling. I believe it. It's coming out of it. 500 degrees at the back, so your coffee cup would get extremely warm. So you just, I usually I stand by and watch it until I until I can't hold it any longer. <laughs> and then I drop a tea bag in. When you're out in the middle of the jungle, that's the only way you can get hot tea in the morning. You know that's that's what you got to do. You got to do what you got to do. I've been down in uh, Venezuela and had to uh, make tea out in the middle of nowhere. I've been down in Colombia out in the on the Magdalen River. Yeah. 
there's the Honeywell burner control. It's taking a look at the flame sensor and everything like that. You can see wiring to that, super simple. And then here's the VFDs. This is the 100 horse VFD right there, big Yaskawa. And this is the smaller VFD for the uh, blower motor right there. This is all 480, so no touchy. Real scary if you touch it. Well, it's only scary once. <laughs> you just die. Only once. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's the main disconnect right there. You can see all the power coming in and splitting out to everything right there. Uh, here's all the contactors and there's some breakers. And that contactor is on Ethernet. I can read current sensing and all that good stuff. So there's a little cooling fan and an arc flash divider. The AAA titles are in here. Allen Bradley controls, uh, Honeywell burner controls, Allen Bradley's ethernet switch. I mean, the whole Allen Bradley automation stack. So best of the best. Oh, did it? Yeah, it's, it's, it's intensifying now. There's the big one. That's pretty cool. Here comes some air. We still got a lot of water coming out the bag. In a few more minutes, that will turn into a cloud of steam. Control panel says the water's at 113 degrees. Let's see. Oh yeah, that's warm. Perfect temp. I mean, a little over shower temp. I don't want to hold that for too long. Feels like 113 degrees. It feels like a really hot shower. The burner is still 100% at idle, and that's a lot of steam. It's just about done starting up. Uh, maybe one or two more minutes until it gets into steam quality. Jared decided to shut it down with his antics. So, <laughs> full restart. Here's another one under construction right now. You guys can look inside what's out on the trailer. And now we go to the field with our reporter on the scene, Gabe. It's blowing everywhere. I have to tell you, the weather here is terrible. What are we gonna do with all this? Oh, we should rebuild this. Uh, actually, you know what? I don't want to rebuild this. No. <laughs> I think he just bought this for like a couple hundred dollars because it's a rollover propane truck. Dude, I tell you what, after seeing that and now getting all the water. Oh, it feels really Ooh, good. It feels great. Yeah, steam plus uh, a breeze. Man, look at this truck. I thought this truck was like uh, maybe a rental that they had picked up, but it, it, instead it looks perfect and I, it must run and drive. I bet it completely runs and drives. Probably does. I mean, here. It, you know, on some planet, there's no power at all. Huh. I'm sure there's got to be like battery disconnect switch. You know, they, they may have put this on a trailer and then had it filled with propane and brought it back just because yeah. it was probably like the cheapest way to get a propane tank of this size. Makes sense. I love that it's an automatic with air yeah, brakes. Maybe, that's, it's, maybe it's not neutral. Maybe that's what it is. It's cool, man. Wait, it's an automatic, but it has a third pedal. But it's an auto. It also has a button that says manual. Huh? Yeah. Oh. This explains the power. The batteries are gone, and you're right, the drive shaft is definitely gone. Found it. <laughs> All right, bolt it up, let's drive this. What's the deal with the propane truck? I thought that was like one you rented, but apparently it's a wrecked one that you bought? Yeah. How much did you pay for that? I don't want to say. 500 bucks? A little more. <laughs> I figured it was 500, but it's a rollover? Yeah. Huh. Guy went around the corner and the road, the road gave way while he was uh, going around the corner. Oh, I right see. Right after the floodwaters that were happening earlier this spring. Yep, yep. So the flood gave way as he went around the corner, the front tire actually caved off the side of the road. Huh. Caved off the side of the road and he recovered and got the front wheel back up on and then the rear wheel dropped off into the hole and it just flipped him right up over. He was going around to the short corner when he was doing it. So he wasn't going very fast. It just barely tipped over and slid. He said probably 10 foot. What did you do to get propane in it? I uh, called the propane delivery company. Oh, and they just filled it up here? Yeah. Oh, I, I figured you put it on a trailer and hauled it to the propane place. No, I put it on my truck and hauled it here. And oh. Just pulled the hose off that you normally hook up to a propane, propane tank. tank at your house. And oh, there it is. Well, that's probably the cheapest propane storage there is. Dirty. There's the buttons you were looking for. It's kind of hard to see the exterior lights, but there's LEDs all the way around it. Pretty cool. We did talk about this thing once and everyone thought it was for fracking. Nothing to do with that. What you do with steam is they put the steam uh, in like a gas train or a steam train that dumps into the ground around the oil wells and it just slowly heats up the ground. And as the ground heats up, 
the crude oil moves a lot easier in the ground and it cranks up your well's output. So you can take a, you know, a poorly performing well and I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but you can take your output up massively for a relatively small investment, right? It's not fracking, you're not hammering on the ground, there's no water injection or anything like that. It's just steam, which is a lot less water. And you just kind of warm everything up and the crude oil flows like water instead of butter. So let's do it. We'll join in. Woo! We'll join the fray. Uh, Safety wait. third. Safety third. But this time, my ears kind of hurt. You want the good ones. Oh, these, nice. good yeah, ones. these have the cord. <laughs> Fancy. Ladies, do you like ears? Then you'll like our new ear plugs. That's right. We have plugs for your ears. That's better. I just heard things get really loud. Let's head back out there. It should be in quality. It seems extremely loud. Woo! Well, 
they got it there for a couple minutes and now we're gonna head home because uh, there's a little more tuning to be done. This was the tuning session. They usually spend days doing tuning. This was like the first day of it. So we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. <laughs> the LEDs look pretty amazing on that thing when they turn on and off. They really do. Yeah, it's it just looks nice and new. Well, that was pretty fun. It was. It was great uh, giving you the weather report. Yep. Careful with those hurricanes. Yes. And like on a serious note, if you're around the hurricanes, be careful with the hurricanes. Yeah, don't, don't, don't go out and play in the hurricane. Yeah. So that is it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. That was pretty cool. Got to run through steam today. <laughs> oh, dang it, Bobby. <laughs> you done? Messed up now, boy.